Greetings, and welcome to Terra Prime Live. My name is Erock. I am a, a an, an apprentice in exile, um, standing in uh, this week for Master Anonymous, uh, who is uh, has taken a trip to Dantooine, and um, who has very bravely again entrusted me to the show. Well, to chair it anyway. Uh, so joining me tonight here on uh, in my backyard is my Padawan Gabe. Say hi, buddy. Hi. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have fun. He's going to help me uh, do some drills later, too. Uh, also, tonight on the panel, we have Ed, Master Artorius Vidal. How's it going, Ed? It's going great. I want to throw a shout-out there to my buddy Gary, who's going to get introduced next. It's his Hello. birthday, at least here in the States it is. So, Gary, from across the pond, have a happy birthday for the rest of the day and into tomorrow. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. And like that. And well, you know what I'm gonna say next, uh, Gary. Welcome to the show, and again, happy, happy, happy birthday, man. It's uh, yeah, still your birthday over here. Thanks, thanks very much. <laughs> yes, uh, it's it's moved past it now, but I get to enjoy it twice. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, Gary. And we also have tonight, last but not least, we have our other apprentice, Robert. How you doing tonight? Doing good tonight. How are you doing tonight? You're all excellent, man. Uh, good to see you here too. And yeah, so tonight's show uh, is is about what uh, we we've already done an apprentice show before, uh, talking about how we got into the show uh, and into the um, into the TPLA system. Tonight we're going to be talking about what we do to maintain and sharpen our skills. Uh, one of the I guess uh, advantages is that TPLA stuff is is quite easily found on the web. Uh, everything is quite demonstrated and, and demonstrated clearly. But one thing that's kind of missing because we are in exile is live support, like human to human interaction. In that situation, I would have to assume that we would be drilled and drilled and drilled and drilled and drilled by uh, by a sensei or a teacher or a master. Uh, in this case, uh, what we would like to talk about is uh, what we're doing for ourselves uh, in place of a, a master being there. How do you motivate yourself? What do you do to, to maintain um, your skills, as in footwork, blade work, uh, saber control, anything? Uh, how, do you, how do you sharpen? What do you do to practice your skills? Um, and then uh, for the second part of the show, we are going to have Master Artorius Vidnul become a drill instructor, and it kind of looks like uh, kind of looks like I'm the only one that's uh, able to do uh, any demonstrating tonight. So I'm going to just in advance, right at the beginning of the show here, ask Ed to please go easy on me, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Gary, would you um, would you like to start um, and and let us know? Uh, what you do to maintain your skills? Um, uh, anything you'd like to talk about? Uh, how, how do you to, how do you get better and keep it up there? Um, I think it's, it's like anything really. I mean, the, the main sort of emphasis is just on on practicing. Uh, as you were saying, I mean, the, the you know the, the we're very fortunate in so much that the TPLA um, information is readily available. The demonstrations are readily available to watch and to to mimic. Uh, so you know, there's plenty of stuff there to to try to emulate and work on. Uh, for for myself, I mean, I'm always looking for for new ways of of using the things that I'm learning. Um, you, you know, trying to. I mean, foot, foot, it's, it's interesting you mentioned about blade work and footwork, and absolutely, you know, those are those are the two things that I tend to sort of split up a little bit. Um, I mean one thing I started doing recently was was looking at just doing the footwork. So essentially not even having a, a you know a, a saber in my hand, just kind of going through different stances, moving in and out of them, changing direction, that kind of thing. Uh, obviously, you know, you've got the same thing, you can do the same sort of things with the, with the blade work. You know, you can look at your different parries, you can look at your different strikes. Um, different positions that you need to be in, um, how that works with the body, making sure that you're turning at the right angles, 
um, and then trying to put the whole thing together. Um, I've also been working recently on putting together something I think you've probably probably seen, Eric, actually, um, putting together a, a sort of a wooden dummy to give me something to practice on. <laughs> you know, um, and, and it's, it, it is really, really useful, I find, having a target. You know, having something where, you know, if I'm doing if I'm doing a shim, for example, and I'm coming in from the side, you know, going and, and knowing how far through I've got to go, where, rather than sort of doing it in thin air. And really, it's just practice, 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 repetition, um, trying not to drop my saber, because I, I hate push-ups. Um, and just just really doing that. And I, I think from, from a motivation point of view, for me, it's watching other people, and it's seeing just what can be done. Uh, with 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 this stuff, you know, I mean, I'm not exactly the most acrobatic or or slim of people, so you know, I'm I'm not really going to be throwing cartwheels and tumbles, but certainly watching what other people do, um, and even you know, going right back to the movies themselves, going right back into canon, I find that very encour you know, it's something that encourages me because hey, and I'm sure we all have the same thing, the thing that kind of got us into this was wanting to be able to do that. So I think that's that's kind of my take on it, really. Oh, excellent, man. Um, yeah, I know. Once you see the movie, it's like, well, that looks like a lot of fun, and I bet you, I bet you, everybody on the panel here swung either a broom handle or something uh, representing a lightsaber as a kid. So that's, I know just, I did. That's a given, I guess, uh, for us in the saber community. But um, but Gary, um, just to expand on that. Um, uh, how do you determine which areas um, yeah, you think you need to work on uh, when, uh, when, when you are practicing? Um, if you're doing it entirely sort of on your own, and we're very lucky with, with TPLA because there is, um, there, there is quite a lot of... Um, it's not sort of in person, you know, because to be fair, you know, we all live so far apart from each other that it's not really possible. But there is a, um, a lot of um, kind of... There, there is a lot of support and a lot of advice available to us, as, as you know yourself. And so getting other people to watch what you do, recording it on video, getting other people to watch it, to give you feedback on that, because they can often see things that you can't. That's, that's one fantastic way of doing it, and we, I know we've all done that. Um, but I think also listening to your body and, you know, basically working on the field, things that feel awkward. You know, you know when you're doing something and it feels, it just feels awkward trying to do it. You know, you can't get your hand round far enough or you can't get your stand slow enough or whatever. You know, the, the whole point is to try to get things to feel very smooth, very natural and, and very coordinated. And I think we all know when it doesn't feel like that, if you just pay attention to what your body's telling you. You know, so, I mean, that goes right back into my you know my martial arts training as well that that you you do feel that i mean you feel uncoordinated to start with anyway but um once you start to build up a degree of of coordination and a bit degree of control you you do notice things you notice if you know if something feels a bit strange or it doesn't feel like it's flowing properly and that can sort of give you little hints yeah for sure um and uh, and i of course, uh, we, we see uh, a lot of uh, videos that you post as well. Uh, submitting that for feedback is, uh, that's, you can see it, it's improving uh, a lot of your stuff, man, at least from my perspective. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, you're definitely on the right track, man. Yeah, I've, actually, it's funny, in your short stay here, I've learned a lot for you, from you. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, thanks. Um, uh, Robert, um, how about you, man? Um, what, what, do you, uh, what do you like to do to, to sharpen up the old... Uh, Skills, I guess you'd say. Well, so, some of the first things that I, I keep in mind is that it is a style. It is, it is a martial art of sorts. Even though it's a fantasy setting, I'm still holding a piece of polycarbonate tube with a metal handle. And I have to remember that it can be used as a, as a harmful device. I have to keep in mind that the discipline required to do that is, is something that has to be sharpened daily. So mental focus is where I like to start. I'll start out with 10 minutes of of mental focusing, some meditation if necessary, and then I'll pick up the saber and I'll start right off at Shicho. It doesn't matter if I intend to work Makashi or if I intend to work 
uh, sorosu or just footwork or stances, I will start with the shicho because that is the fundamentals, that's the basics. And forgetting that means that you've gone on to the advanced without keeping your fundamental right where it needs to be. Um, once I've done that for about five, ten minutes, I'll move forward into what I intended to work on. So it's it's basically 20 minutes of warm up through shicho, and then it's proper footwork, stance, holding the weapon, good grip, lots of different things to do as long as it's focusing. Now, sometimes I hit a stumbling block, and those stumbling blocks generally come in the form of um, what am I doing wrong? Because it, as Gary said, it does feel unnatural from time to time. And it's not coordination, it's simply my hand's in the wrong place, or why isn't this feeling fluid? At that point, I stop, I step back, I check the videos online, I check the, the, the forums, I discuss, I talk, I listen, I read, and then I go back and I take a fresh perspective at it. Cool, man. I, uh, I really like what you said about the, uh, the focus. Uh, you, can just, you can do the same action, but just focus on a different element, and... Uh, I think that's a good thing uh, everybody could take away is just be really absolutely almost exaggerate how conscious you are of what you're doing. And I, I yeah, it's a really cool idea. But uh, another thing you mentioned at the beginning there though was um, uh, before you even picked up the saber, uh, you talked about meditation. That is something I have to say is is really really interesting to me. Um, uh, do you mind uh, expanding on that just a little bit? Um, some of it, I, I, I have a fitness center that I work at in, and they actually have a mind and body studio where I can just go down and, and sit in nice and peace and quiet for five to ten minutes and just focus on what it is I'm trying to get out of the training session. It's not so much of specifically coming up with an outline and writing it down, but just having a general idea of where I'd like to go. Uh, too much focus on something and you could over focus on it. I, it's, t it's tough to explain from time to time. Um, it's basically, you know, lost in the forest, you can't see the trees. Um, well, it's funny, uh, I, I, I've seen something, at least on Wikipedia and uh, my, some of the comic book stuff that I've looked at. Uh, Jedi battle meditation. You go, before you even get to the battle, you envision the outcome. Um, perhaps this is the real world application of a, a Jedi battle meditation man. Very possibly. Um, I, I do it because usually by the time I get to the fitness center it's been nine hours at work and an hour with family and I'm getting there and I have to let that all go. I have to push it out of the way because if I don't then I find myself hitting myself. I find myself dropping my saber and pushing the floor for a bit. I find myself um, making mistakes because my mind isn't in the game. It's not where it belongs. Because, as I said before, it is a combat form. It is a weapon. And there are other people in the fitness center not doing what I'm doing. And um, one bad swing and letting go of my saber and out goes a 4x8 mirror or I hit a person or worse. And that's what I have to avoid. So the focus keeps me in the present. Very, very cool. And um, now I got a few mental notes uh, recorded there. Uh, Thanks, man. Okay. Um, so, what, um, I guess since we're out of our apprentices there, <laughs> uh, so uh, well, I guess what I do uh, to maintain stuff, uh, we, um, yeah, I, I didn't really have too much of a, a regime. Uh, what I noticed I had been doing at first uh, was just free forming, uh, just making sure it, or I was being conscious of my actions, I guess, a little bit now that I, uh, think about it, but uh, uh, what I was doing was, um, hey, we're live, dude. Say hi to the world. Hi. Okay. Let me finish my story, okay? Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so, uh, just getting back to uh, <laughs> what I was saying there. Uh, somebody help me out here. It's, like, there's dog barking and stuff, everything. It's going to, yeah, just reforming. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, I found that that would help me with my control and such, but it didn't really help me uh, work on any basics. So, that's kind of why I, uh, we're, we're here tonight, is to, how do we get these basics done? Uh, turns out free-forming is fun and all that, but it's it's just not, uh, it's not advancing me. It's just keeping me where I am. So, I'm going up. Uh, here, yeah, still, so. That's, um, I guess that's what I'm uh, concentrating on. 
uh, when I get stuck, I just revisit old videos. I watch stuff that I've done before. I slow it down immensely, uh, exaggerate it, and basically just uh, stick to my, my musical background. Uh, I've been encouraged to, uh, to kind of keep that in my mind uh, when I do stuff, so, uh, and how I practice, uh, how I practice, sorry, the methodology behind it. Uh, with Sabering versus music, the same thing, I, I discovered, just a different instrument. That's all. Yeah, I, I guess you could call it a percussion instrument. But, uh, sorry, that was lame. Uh, at any rate, uh, yeah, it's just that uh, I'm, 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 I'm really hurting for uh, a good regime of of drills. I guess stuff that I can concentrate on, do that focus, but almost repetitive actions that are only going to build a foundation and not just let me have fun in my backyard or my garage, or, you know, which which is fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. I I'm not ashamed of the fact that I was doing that, but I just I, I feel the need now to start growing a little rather than just playing. Um, so let's see. Um, anybody um, anybody have any comments or questions at this point? Uh, I I have a, I have a comment. I I practice. Uh, Surprise. And as we all know, Master Anonymous practices, and as it turns out, Master Voronok practices, and as it turns out, everybody actually has to practice from time to time, top to bottom. This is not something where uh, only the learners in exile or the apprentices or even knights can weigh in. This is something where everybody who has a skill set that they're maintaining or trying to improve should be able to say something about what they do, and um, the the way that it starts for me is actually very similar to something that Rob said. It's a meditative item that I usually start with, and this is whether I'm practicing music or martial arts or if I'm going to do um, a Saturday open mat in jiu-jitsu or whatever it is I'm doing. The meditation, which a lot of people don't necessarily understand, doesn't have to be... Uh, and Rob illustrated this without meaning to. It doesn't have to be a religious or a spiritual meditation. Meditation is just concentration of the mind. I will meditate or I'll simply contemplate and think about why I'm going to practice, what my outcome is. Exactly what Rob said is, is I focus on I am going to pick up my saber or whatever item I'm practicing with to this end. I want to improve in this area or whatever the case may be that meditation that focus just sets your mind on a path of this is where I'm headed today right now for the next however long I'm practicing for me it's usually five or ten minutes because I don't have a lot of free time um, what am I gonna do with this very short amount of time that I have and go so for me since I have such a short amount of time and, you know, we've got a parent on the panel, we have people who are uh, very, very busy with their personal lives right now because we're all human beings and it just so happens that the local Jedi temple doesn't exist. Nobody is going out to actually train with Yoda because that situation is A, not available, B, time consuming, and I live in Jersey near no one who has a saber. So... I don't have people to practice with. I have five minutes, ten minutes a day. I do basics. I do basics. I do basics. I do basics. And if you hop on the TPLA site, which I have another computer right here, there is video after video of basics. Every cut, blocking zones, different styles. That's all you need to practice because the most complicated techniques that you're going to learn are going to be based on these basics. Right? So if you want to improve a complicated technique, but you don't want to just work on the one technique, practice a basic that you think leads to that technique. Or if you're not sure, practice any basic. Practice your basics. Um, because they're the foundation of everything complicated. Everything. If you only practice one complicated move forever, you're not really improving your overall skill set. You're improving that one move. But if you complicate, or uh, excuse me, if you practice your basics, everything gets better. It's a, it's a simple concept. So 
the the why you want to get better and what you want to get better is where I start, and then I usually find the basics that lead up to that. So that's a comment to consider if you've got a short period of time like most human beings to practice in, shoot for your basics. Um, that's uh, very stage advice. Um, just like you said, uh, time is at a premium, and uh, I'd love to, to pack in as much good organized, uh, I guess, practice, I guess, um, to just in the short amount of time, uh, maybe 15 minutes to a half an hour a night, and get uh, the most out of that. So hopefully by the end of the show, we'll sort of have a, sort of a, a possible training regimen that, uh, that you could have just on the go. Uh, we'll make a, a short one, a long one. I don't know, guys. We can uh, we can come up with whatever we want. But uh, hopefully by the end of the uh, the show, anybody watching will have uh, a desire to go out and uh, stop maybe spinning the saber and, uh, and start just kind of stepping and rough, basically running a, a rut in your backyard on the grass. So, um, yeah, so uh, did uh, anybody, how about um, Rob, uh, Gary, do you have any uh, comments about that as well, about practicing or... I, I do, actually. Um, I would like to point out that sometimes you go into practice with an idea and a plan, and you get about three moves into your plan, and you realize you need to go back. Your plan should not be so fixed when you make it that it can't withstand some kind of you know, triage, going back and taking a look at what you need to fix, fixing what needs to be broken. You're going back to the very basics. Why does this strike feel wrong? All right. Just make sure that you are practicing. That's the trick. All right. Practice, perseverance, patience, those are the three Ps, and we have to have all three, and that's very critical. Absolutely. Yes, um, can I just jump in there, actually? Yes, please. Um, it's a funny thing, um, because I remember in my days doing Taekwondo, um, our, our instructor had what he called the five Ps, which was, which was persistent practice prevents poor performance. And it is just that idea of over and over again, practicing it and practicing it and, and until you eventually get it. Um, it's funny because uh, you mentioned about your musical background, Eric. Uh, as you know, I have a musical background as well. I know, obviously, you know, Master Torius does also. Um, and one of my heroes, uh, the classical guitarist Andres Segovia, commented once that you spend 5 10, 15 years of your life perfecting your technique on the instrument, getting it where you want it to be, and then you spend the rest of your life keeping it that way. And I, I think in, no matter what skill set you're working on, I think a never a truer word was, was said than, than that, to be honest. Sorry, I missed the mute button. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, very, uh, very true. Um, okay, uh, Ed, um, do, um, so uh, as somebody who, uh, with uh, way more advanced uh, training, especially just from my personal uh, perspective, um, that would have to be almost astronomical, uh, to be honest. And that's cool. That's where we are. But um, yeah, I know you mentioned uh, a few things about that. Um, Dave, excuse me, sir. He's a noisemaker tonight. Um, Ed, could you uh, perhaps maybe uh, enlighten us a little bit about uh, some of the uh, the basics uh, that you do cram into the uh, the little time you have, and uh, maybe expand on that, please. Um, Hopefully, maybe that will become a basis for a small exercise that we can all do, just to keep these skills sharp. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first thing that I'll actually start with, and I, I've cleared just enough space in my apartment that I can show this, um, is actually my grip. I come from, um, when it comes to blade work, uh, a Japanese uh, background, katanas, iaido, um, Stuff like that, crazy stuff, kenjutsu, good things. So I have a variety of uh, training implements, several different types of boken, shinai, stuff. So I've got just a plain old-fashioned boken here, white oak, standard length. And uh, proper grip, the blade starts about here, so I go two finger widths below that. And then my pinky just barely curls around the end. And I'll actually just make sure that I get my grip 
just the way I want it first. So I got my fingers curled, good strength in the right fingers, and I'll make sure I got the grip right. And then I'll start with just a basic head to navel cut. And I'll do however many I need to until I can do five or more in a row exactly the way I want to. Okay? So uh, the proper thing to do is to actually wring your hands when you do this cut. You actually want to, like you're wringing out a towel, you're going to rotate your hands as you cut down. So I'll start up and I'll cut to my navel. And I don't like how that ended. My shoulders are up. My elbows feel like they're jutting out, so then I need to—I know I need to work on from my shoulder to my elbow. That's not positioned correctly. Back up and cut. Pretty good. Uh, it didn't horizontal out at the end for me, so I got to ring more and make sure that my lead hand, my right hand, is coming down to even. Cut again. That was a good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. And now I'm starting to feel better. It's coming out at the navel, and it's just. Head to navel, straight cut down. Maybe uh, I don't want to focus on cuts. I'll start with that one cut because I, okay, routine. I always start grip, head to navel, always. I always start with those two techniques. It gets my head focusing on the right things, my hands, my arms, my body, and the blade and making sure that everything's happening exactly the way I want it to. So, um... I have an opening routine that I just do every time I pick it up. Grip, head to navel. So let's say that I'm now thinking more along the lines of I want to practice counterattacks. Counterattacks are good. Everybody loves counterattacks. I'm a counterattack type person. I prefer to perform a block and then a strike rather than um, just constantly on the offensive. Let's see how I can do here. All right. So perhaps I'm thinking I want to practice, you know, um, parries first, because I'm not going to go straight into the complicated. Block strike is complicated to me. It's a two-part move. So I'm going to start just ready position. Again, making sure my grips are good and my arms are in the right place and I'm comfortable. And I'll just do small parries. And I'll do all of them until they feel right. And I'll do lows. And I'll just do all of them until they feel good. I might have to do them ten times today. Tomorrow I might only have to do them three, but I never do them less than three. I had a trumpet teacher who told me uh, if you can do it three times in a row correctly, chances are you can do it correctly more than three times. In a row is the important thing. You have to do it three times in a row. It's that persistent practice prevents poor performance, which I love and I am going to take with me. So... Uh, Again, parries. So the next step is going to be to add the next thing. I want parry and strike. So I'll do a parry, and I'm going to do a basic cut. Parry, basic cut. And I always cut away from the parry. Uh, that's just a Japanese swordsmanship thing. I'm not going to parry, reposition, and then cut again. There's a pause there, and that's not good. I'm going to parry, and I'm going to shift. Notice the point doesn't actually move when I do that, reposition the bottom and cut. So I'm actually keeping it in a smooth motion. Parry cut, parry cut, and the parries are small, and I put my body behind the cut, and I'm making sure that I feel good about it. And if I feel like starting to chain them, then I'll chain them. And as I feel better, I'll move a little bit faster, and maybe I'll push it to the point where I notice a hitch or something goes wrong. And I'm actually looking for that. A lot of people think that you're supposed to practice so that you get it um, right every single time. I practice to find out what I'm doing wrong. Because I'm doing stuff wrong. It has to be true. I'm human. I must be making mistakes. I'm still breathing. So I just keep going until I make one. And when I make one, I go, oh, that's not good. i got to fix that. And then I figure out what happened. I'll do it, you know, 20, 30, 40 times, however many it takes. Maybe it was a glitch. Maybe it's a mistake. But I do it. If I get that far and I haven't made any mistakes, I will switch from my standard boken 
to my Suburiboken. So this is still white oak, but you can see the size difference. The, the point of the Suburiboken is the fact that it's weighted, so it's significantly heavier. Um, I mean, look at the handle and then the gauge difference from the handle up to where the blade is. I'll do the exact same exercises with this puppy now. So now I'm doing, a, this is an exercise, like a physical weightlifting, I'm improving my muscle coordination exercise. And I'll start with my grip, and then I'll go and do my head to navel cut, and then I'll go through the same things. Because if I just jump straight to the fast parry cut, straight to the advanced technique, I might miss something small, because the grip is different. The handle's a little bit longer on this, okay, which I like. Uh, the grip's a little bit wider. It's a bit more true to an actual katana. The diameter is larger, is what I'm saying. So I'll get my grip. Get my grip. And I'll do head to navel. Bring it up. And I'll ring my hands down. And that feels actually pretty good today, which is nice. Okay, so next up, maybe parry. 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 and I'll just see where I can go with it. It's the next step up for me. So uh, that's a typical practice session for me. I only work with the wood. Uh, if I have a lot of extra time, if I have the extra 10 minutes, I'll pick up a saber, and I'll do it with the saber from the beginning to the end. And you're actually working on different skills with every item that you use. You know, I've got the light one where I can work on precision and accuracy and really making sure that I get my points in all the right spot. I got the heavy one, make sure that I'm using the muscles a little bit more than what I actually have to use. By adding the weight, I improve my speed and my strength. And then when I go to the actual saber, now I'm working on the actual weapon that I'm going to do this with if I get the chance to train with someone three different items that give me three different experiences, but the material's the same every time in one day. That is a brief synopsis for me. Uh, if anybody else wants to throw out what they do, please share. If you have a question about something I said, jump in, uh, but that's me talking a lot, so I need to move that to someone else now. Yeah, that, that sounds like a swapping hilt. Uh, with our with lightsabers, if you have uh, more than one. Absolutely. And uh, oh, that's very cool, uh, gentlemen. Panel. I uh, I really don't have anything. No, it's me either, to be honest. I mean, it's 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 actually given me some ideas of things that that I'm going to sort of incorporate uh, as well. Because the, the listening to listening to Master Toyo's talking, I mean, the one thing that was not mentioned at all was doing anything with the lower body. It's just working the technique of using the sword and how that and getting that absolutely right and keeping it simple by basically you know keeping changing stances or moving you know the lower half out of it. So that presumably when you then want to incorporate that, you've already got the upper body down. Yeah, it's, com it's compartmentalization of your skills. Um, a mistake that is often made is, is going to be advanced technique. Now, I think of advanced techniques as a lot of different things. I mentioned once already that combining the parry and the strike was advanced to me because the parry is one technique and the strike is another. And if you perform either of the two poorly, then the second is affected. So moving and doing a parry and or a strike or anything like that that's even more complicated than just doing two moves because now you're involving an entire new set of motor skills. The idea being that once you are really solid with a set of skills from the waist up, then you're absolutely right, Gary. When you go to incorporate the movement or the footwork, your focus can be more on that. And if you need, if, if need be, it's totally acceptable to only work on the waist down and not even involve the hands, okay? You can just hold a saber or a boken or anything you have, broomstick, whatever, in a ready position and only work on your feet. And that's perfectly a good idea. I just don't have the space to do that right now. 
I didn't even think feet. I just went, I'm going to show them what I do for the saber work. But you're right. It's compartmentalization. That's something I do. Excellent. Very, very cool. Okay, well, um, I don't know. That's, uh, I think we, uh, we come up with something. Um, maybe start some, uh, some drills here. I don't know. Feeling a, feeling a little masochistic tonight. No, mm -hmm. uh, Perfect. Why don't much. you start with your grip? All right. So uh, let's see. I'm just going to mute this for a second. Okay, so having, um, having a set pattern of, of things that you're going to do from beginning to end is, uh, is good because it's going to get your mind focused, like Robert was talking about. But it should also not simply be um, something that you do and go, okay, I always start this way. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. you got to actually focus on what you're doing. When I do my grips, I think about each finger and the role it plays. Closes the grip kind of strong, used for motion. The strongest finger in the hand keeps the grip solid. And these two fingers are used for a whipping motion. So each finger plays a part in your grip. Think about it and make sure it lays exactly where you want it on your hilt. So, Eric, take the time now. Get a good, comfortable grip on it. Yeah, I was, uh, I was doing it as you were talking about that, and um, that's... Yeah. It, it, it feels familiar, but... Never really took the time to, to really think about each finger like that. And uh, th another thing I heard about uh, with certain types of meditation, when you have somebody start working on breathing, and then imagine a, a tingly feeling starting at the toes, where it's going right up the body eventually. But, uh, sort of the same thing, but uh, with just the hands too. And yeah, I see what you mean there. You can rotate a little bit. And I got uh, well I'm using my. My one-hander right now. Should I? Uh, did you want me to use my two-hander? You know, I'm I'm very open on this. If you want to work one-handed grip, we'll work one-handed grip. I'm fine with it. If you prefer to to duel or to work in a one-handed scenario, then starting with the two-handed grip is going to be a waste of your time. So, focus on the one hand, each finger, and in that case, then we're going to expand our awareness to the palm also and feel how the palm is resting. Depending upon the shape of your hilt, certain parts of your palm will touch. You don't actually need the entire palm to touch, especially not this inner spot, spot here. If you get too much grip with your palm, um, you will tense up your wrist. So it's got to be, you know, it, it's got to be comfortable enough for you to function, basically. Okay. So, um, yeah, I see what you mean there, um. You've got your grip where you want it, Eric. What I want you to decide on is what exactly you want to improve. We basically have 20 minutes left in this Hangout. Let's use it to actually go through a drill set for something that you want to work on, something you want to improve. So is there something that you're struggling with? Saber only. No feet, no lower body. Okay. Um, cool. You're looking to improve. Okay, uh, so we'll start with that first, I guess. Um, uh, well, most of the time it's uh, it's... The, um, for, for moon darts, um, now the, the the Sunday the Sunday practice, uh, we we have been discussing this and, and trying to keep a good posture, but um, yeah, that's that's sort of what I have been working on, just just with blade alone. Uh, for me though, uh, for the, for me though, and it's it's not really just the. Uh, the blade I'm kind of I'm kind of cool with just because I do a lot of that silly swinging stuff and maybe it hasn't built any skills but it, it certainly has edified my my control of, of a saber in my hand absolutely uh, spinning isn't useless it just doesn't really take you anywhere particularly except give you good control uh, so I've got the control I'm I'm well I, I could go farther I will go farther but I'm satisfied with that I'm leaving actually the footwork behind. And that's what I find I'm, I'm really struggling the most at, uh, is, is the is joining the, the hand actions uh, joining the hand actions to the, the foot, the feet work, uh, sorry, foot work or the feet. So it's, um, let's see, to make this a little bit better for us, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here.
good idea getting rid of the bar for right now because we're going to be working. Okay. All right. How are my feet? Well, they're 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 fine. It depends. It's a it's a very it's a very good question. Right now, it you're doing a smart thing. If you notice, he's got his side presented rather than his front. If you present the front of your body to your enemy, this is a large target. This is a smaller target. So uh, that's why you'll see a lot of you'll see all fencers. You know they'll be they'll be pointed to the side, prevent, uh, uh, providing the lowest profile to their opponent that they possibly can. If I'm like this, I mean, Jesus, the stab area is huge. You're gonna kill me. Now I can, you know, I got my my space to do what I need. So your feet are good. Um, you got your heels in a bit of a line, but your toes aren't all pointed in the same direction. That's a good place to start. Take one step forward in that stance. Take another one. Okay, so you just took two different types of steps. The first one was a very hop, skip, and a jump type, and the second one was a standard um, fencer's approach, where you take the foot forward and then drag the back foot, which is fine. Um, either type works, but when I tell you to take two steps and you take two different steps, there's a place that you can work on before you even join the hands to the feet. You need to get your feet doing the same thing all the time. Yes. Uh, so one of the drills that you can start with is just advance and retreat. You've got your saber lit. You take a step forward. You take a step forward. You take a step back. You take a step back. Forward, forward, back, back, as you need. So take a couple steps forward, a couple steps back, and I'm going to commentate as to what's happening as you do it. Okay, so he's lowering his stance. That's good. I like how he's got the back hand in mind. He hasn't forgotten his off hand. He's still doing something with it. Okay, so take a couple more. Not bad. Your balance faltered a little bit there at the end. So be careful of the size of your step. Try and keep the size of your step uniform. Okay? If you're going to practice an advancing lunge, that's a different step than a standard distance closer. So if you're looking to just close a little bit of distance, you got to think about what type of step you're actually taking. So what type of step do you want to work on? Do you want to work on a penetrating lunge, or do you want to work on a simple advance, Eric? Uh, let's try uh, just a regular hut slide. Uh, All right, go for it. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay. Careful that your feet don't come too close together at the in-between portions of your steps. If your feet are close together as you step and I advance while you advance, the person who has the better base is going to remain standing. The person with the poorer base is going to be on the ground. These are all the little things that go into a, something as simple as practicing your step. What size step are you practicing? What is the purpose of your step? Um, are you at any point feeling like you are going to fall off balance? And now he's focusing on something even more specific, whether he means to or not. He's actually being careful as to how he places and releases the front foot. He consciously made the effort to place the heel and roll to the toe. This is good. This is fine. Um, fencers will sometimes place the toe and let the heel drop, but if you are taking a smaller advancing step and you want to place your heel, that's okay. It's a different type of step. So even the pattern in which your foot hits the ground can have a huge effect on the step that you're practicing. All right, now let's pretend that we've been doing this for about 10 minutes. I want you to do the hut slide, but I want you to involve the, the blade and either use a simple cut down, or if you're using a more Makashi style, Eric, then you can add a, a slight feint of a stab, a feint. I'm looking for a feint, not an actual attack, but a controlled um, Faint, so small attack. And a hot slide. That's a big step. Yep. And this, and this is a hot slide. A depth. Ha. So the timing of your step and your attack matter. If you are, um, your, your foot hit the ground and then you attacked. They didn't happen together. I want the attack to happen as your foot touches. So as the foot comes down, that's when I want the end of your arc to occur. So instead of foot place attack, I want the attack to happen when your foot places.
Better. Definitely better. One more. So we're going for a cut to the head. This is a perfectly fine feint. The reason to practice a smaller step with the feint, the actual my thought process, not the thought process, my thought process, is I'm looking for um, for my opponent's reaction. I'm looking to see what he's going to do with my feint. If he's going to take the time and go, oh, well, oh my gosh, I must defend, then chances are uh, the person that I'm going against doesn't necessarily understand the basics of distance, timing, and the relations of the blade to another blade. If he doesn't even react, then I know, okay, maybe this guy is really good, uh, mm, not good, or perhaps I'll catch him in an awkward moment and I'll get him. Anything can happen. But this simple practice of making sure that your foot hits at the same time that you attack is very, very good because you're hitting at a moment when you have a base. Rather than your foot touching and then moving, then your balance is continuing to shift. But your balance is landing all at one moment. Uh, Gary, Rob, do you guys have any questions or notice anything that I haven't mentioned? Comments, queries, anything on what just happened to give us another set of eyes? Requests? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, if I can jump in on that, I was just wondering if, I mean, the, I like the idea of, of the, the attack and the footwork arriving at the same time, so that, you, you know, you're not doing one and then the other. Um, I'm assuming that is something that, regardless of style, whether you were, you know, Makashi or Shicho or whatever you were doing, that would still apply. So that as you're as you're advancing forward, you 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 attack and they tie, you time the two together. This is something that um, can be true, but does not always have to be true. In some situations, uh, I could be performing a, an early feint. Let's say that I'm actually planning on doing a slashing cut then what I might decide to do is, before my foot hits the ground, I might decide to put a stab in, and then as my foot comes down, I'll flip it around and put in a slice. So there could be a feint before my foot touches with the idea that the real cut is coming when my foot touches. Could also be the opposite. I could have a real attack slightly before, followed by a feint, or I could have two attacks all in one step. Um, there is... There are as many different options here as there are people, but when you are learning the beginnings, when you are doing the basics, because now we're talking about two or three moves and a step, so that's for me, again, for me I consider that to be an advanced technique. Um, when, you're con when you're considering practicing basics, keep it to one step and one technique, whether it's a feint or a real attack, that's less important, but um, it's a good place to at least start is what I'm trying to say. Very good. Thanks. Cool. Uh, Rob, do you have any requests or questions or opinions? I, I do notice that even as we go through this, we, we are still focusing on the very basics of, of combat. We're talking about slices and slashes and feints and these aren't these aren't heavy duty things. These are all very basic and that should be part of our training routine is just making sure we implement the basics step by step, one at a time, and then put it together into the great big sandwich. And these ideas that we're focusing on are coming from my decision of the why we're practicing. Uh, the why that we're practicing that I've decided is um, function. We're practicing a function, something that we can actually use with an opponent in front of us. Now, um, if you're not a, a duelist, if you're someone who picks up the lightsaber because, uh, you like the spinny, flashy stuff, then your practice is going to take a completely different approach. You're going to want to focus on more of the uh, flashy techniques, and there's nothing wrong with that, but that's why before you practice, you have to decide why you're practicing. Are you practicing to accommodate this skill set, or are you practicing to accommodate that skill set? What's your end goal? I want to put on a performance by myself. I want to duel 100 men and kill them all. It's two very different approaches from the beginning, and if you don't have that focus in the beginning, then you're going to go, well, I want to make sure that I get some strikes in, but I also want to work on some spinning, and while I'm there, maybe I should do a bit of footwork with both, and now you're completely unfocused. Can I just jump in there as well because
please. Even if you're practicing spins, though, mm -hmm. I mean, the people who, having watched the films, in particular having watched um, episode three, uh, will will say, I I must get the the Annie Obi spin down. I know Mass Anonymous hates that hates that name for it, but you know, even with that, you can take that back to basics and to something more basic that's going to lead into it. Be with you know, before you sort of try to go for the big kind of and you know whizzing the saber around. So even with that, there are still basics, surely, that you can practice before you get there. Mm hmm Absolutely. When it comes to the uh, Obi Annie, as so many of us, uh, oh, he's here. Are you really here, Chad? I, 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 yeah. Oh, he's oh, there. Hey. hey. Yeah. Just got to your favorite thing in the whole wide world. Here on the outer rim. Just decided to check it out. Great. How's we, everything going? It's going great so far. We just decided to get to your favorite thing, the Obi Annie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're talking about practicing items and breaking them down to their most basic parts before you try and go crazy and do four or five moves together. So if one was interested in learning the Obi Annie, um, the for me, for me, that particular spin has three parts. It has this circle, this circle, and that circle. And you can do all of them by themselves. You can spend all day making sure that you really know where this circle is. You can spend all day making sure you really know where this circle is. And my body is moving. You just can't see it so well. And you can spend all day making sure you know where this circle is. If you can do all three parts, then maybe you put two together. And when you can put two together in any combination, then you put all three together. Okay? So again, it's the knowing why you're practicing. Am I practicing to fight? Am I practicing to spin? And then having that goal in mind before you start, transition to the smallest basic that you can get it down to. If it's a spin, then make sure that you've got the grip, where I always start. You've got the grip you want. Wrist is loose, elbows are loose, shoulders loose, body's loose, because that's part of spinning. If your whole body's not in any technique, you're not doing it properly. And then get the slow motion down, going slow. Getting each part down slow. If you're not going to the point where you can really pay attention to each of the functions that's happening, you're not really practicing, you're just kind of going through motions like, all right, I like the obi -Ani. I'm going to practice the obi -Ani. I'm just going to keep doing it really fast. Do it slow. The basics, small parts. Um, did I kind of answer your question there, Gary, or did I totally miss the mark? No, that was exactly the point I was making. You can right. break it down into something really, really small, do it very slow, one bit at a time, and then go into something more complicated, which is the spin in three parts. Right. Okay, very cool. Um, any other burning questions, comments, or do you want me to make Eric do something specific? Hmm? Anything? Master Anonymous? Joe, he just dropped out on us. That's okay. We still love him. He still matters. Approve the, uh, uh, the iPhone app still works. All right, so... Um, with Eric, we were just working on doing uh, a single step with a single technique, okay? Uh, Eric, where would you like to go from here? We can work on two steps, two techniques. We can work on one step, two techniques. We can work on two steps, one technique. We can go for a different step size. Uh, we could do lots of different things. What would you like to do for the next five minutes? Since I no will uh, switch to a two-hander here. Oh, switch to a two step. A side steps. Now that's an interesting thought, Rob. We always have the chat window, and I always encourage use of the chat window, and I do like the concept of a side step. So let's talk about a side step for a second. I love side steps. Um, my primary dueling partner, you all know him as Nero Ataru. Um, ooh, side step with honor slash. We were going to go to that. That's totally where I was headed. It's a very good point, Gary. I love it. So he is a Makashi practitioner which means he comes with a lot of straight-on attacks. Um, he likes to stab, and I like to parry, sidestep, honor slash. Um, it's a beautiful technique, the sidestep. Let me get a little bit more of a straight-on here. 
So if I have an attack coming right at my midsection, can you all give me a nod if you can hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, wonderful. I see your little small heads nodding. So if someone's coming straight on, I'm going to pretend that they're trying to stab me right here in my solar plexus. That's where the ribs end and your lungs kind of stick out. So I'm pretending that he's coming right here, center mass. I'm going to, with my lead foot first in this case, step, parry, okay, and then I'm going to step in. So as Master Nero comes towards me, I'm going to step in and use that step to create a full body honor slash. Side in. You can also go back foot first, but I don't like that feeling because I have to cross my feet. Don't cross your feet. You're off balance. Don't cross them. So, Eric, what I want you to do, take your left foot, which seems to be forward. I hope that's your left. If not, then uh, the camera is mirroring and I can't do anything about it. You're going to step on a 45 degree angle off to your left side. Parry to that, parry in the opposite direction. So you're going to parry to your right. No, the other way. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to parry across where your body just was. So I'm going to step in one direction, push the blade in the other. I'm moving my body out of the way of the attacking blade. Foot goes one way, blade goes the other. And then I'm going to step through with my other foot and slash across. Yeah, good. Now step with the back foot and slash across. You can go in up slash. Up slash is fine. But it's usually a traditional honor slash. So I'll show again. If the blade's coming right at me, this is my right side. Okay, this is my right side. I'm going to step with my right foot, push my blade to my left. So notice the very radical change. I got this beautiful window behind me. My head goes from this pane of glass all the way over. Then I step through, and I'm going to honor slash from my left shoulder to my right hip with the step right through, hopefully, what is Nero Atru's neck and upper shoulder on that side. Right step, carry left, and slice across. And I can do that 500 times at varying speeds. So step in one direction, parry the blade in the other, and then slash. Don't move the tip of your blade. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, that's a very functional, very functional sidestep counterattack. Now, that's two steps, two techniques. It's four items total. It's kind of, kind of advanced. And um, the technique that you're showing me isn't quite perfect where I want it. Yeah, that's good. You can step a little bit more forward with that first foot. You're stepping backward. Don't step forward. Don't step backward. Step forward. So take that right foot. That's better. Now step through and cut. Right. Be careful with your arms. You're really overextending them at the beginning of your cut, and I feel like it's putting you a little off balance. Um, these honor slashes... You don't want to extend your arm or swing like a baseball bat. I'm coming from here, and I'm dragging down. One more time. Nice. Two steps, parry, and a side strike. Simple moves. Okay. Uh, that's true, Rob. That's true. I'd agree with that. Um, this is, again, this is an application of a sidestep. It's not something you always will see, but I, I quite enjoy a sidestep to a center mass attack. Now, uh, any last minute questions or comments or things that we want to talk about with drilling? Because my clock says that it's 8 p.m. Yes, indeed, gents. Well, Ed, thank you so much for that, by the way. That, um, Pleasure. Yeah, as soon as it goes off air, <laughs> you know where I'm going to do, you know what I'm going to be doing all night. <laughs> going to start a campfire and then keep doing this. So, um, but anyways, um, so yeah, any, uh, anybody have any last minute comments or uh, any, any party words uh, for the evening? Not my thank you very parting, much, Eric. My parting words would be to um, know why you're doing what you're doing. Know why you're doing what you're doing. And, and, Persistent practice prevents poor performance. That's awesome. Yeah, the totally. Focus determines your reality. Mm -hmm. Wise words indeed. Very cool. So, um, on behalf of uh, Terra Prime Live, um, my name is Erock. I'd like to also thank 
Master Artorius did know. Ed? Like to thank Darth Arcanus, Gary, and of course, oh, I I don't know your handle. Orinth? Orinthius? Help me out, Rob. Yeah, I mean, that's it's correct. Not, it's this big on my screen. Orinthius, uh, Robert. And um, big thanks to the panel, guys. Uh, again, couldn't have done this without you. Uh, and we'll uh, be signing off for this week. Again, catch us next week, Friday, 7 p.m., on the actual Terra Prime uh, YouTube channel. This will also be posted on the Terra Prime uh, YouTube channel because I set it to Creative Commons and send over the link. <laughs> so um, it will be there eventually, guys, and uh, we will post it in the forums in proper places. So uh, may the force be with you, and thank you very, very much again for joining us. See you next week, guys. Good night.